Coach Andersey, welcome to the first episode of Kent State Wrestling Talk, a new program that we are starting this year for Kent State Wrestling to keep Kent State Wrestling fans, parents, alumni, and the alike, um, everybody who's interested in Kent State Wrestling into Kent State uh, Wrestling and what, let everybody know what you're doing for the 2022-2023 season. How are you doing, Coach Andersey? Good. How about you, Zeb? How are you? I'm, I'm excellent. Okay, so... Just for the viewers out there who don't know who you are, give a quick introduction of who Jim Andersey, the head coach of Kent State Wrestling, is. I'm Jim, I'm Jim Andersey, head, head wrestling coach at Kent State University. How many this years? This is my uh, 20th year, the beginning of my 20th year as head coach. Um, nowadays, all these coaches send out these emails and talk about their team, and you know they're, they're three pages long, and they they, they, they they type fast, they type really well, and that's not me. So I came up with this idea that, to get you involved and we would do a podcast, send it out to anybody that wants to listen to it. We're going to try to do 10 to 12 of them this year. Hopefully they'll be 20 to 30 minutes long. I'll just try to give you the, the updates, what's going on with our program, where we're at with things. Um, we're going to send out an, an area where if you have certain questions you want to ask us, you can email them to me and the next podcast, we'll try to get those things answered. So uh, hopefully we're going to be able to get to all our fans, all our alumni, the parents that uh, hopefully like to find out more about the program recruits anybody that just wants to keep up with Kent State wrestling yeah I didn't even mention recruits in there right like yep. that, that's a big part of uh getting information out there and you know you guys are a mid-major team in the mid-american conference um the, the mat continues to grow in wrestling as teams kind of shuffle and jockey you picked up a team from the southern conference in southern illinois edwardsville you guys absorbed the eastern wrestling league um the, the EWL schools are also PSAC schools, a lot of them. And um, in, in those schools in general, you know, we talk about the PA uh, public schools, Lock Haven, Bloomsburg, uh, Edinburgh, Clarion. Clarion, Clarion, and then, you know, George Mason joined. So Ryder joined. So you guys got a mega conference. And Lock Haven actually was the first team in the last, I want to say, 20 years to win the MAC that's not Mizzou or Central Michigan. How about that? No, well, that's not true, Zeb. That's a hundred percent. That's that's a hundred percent true. Because the last about- team, the last team to not win the MAC, the last team that won the MAC sure. was was Ohio University in two thousand one yep. at the convocation. I was wrestling. Central yep. won all of them, and then when Mizzou joined the conference, yep. uh, they won all of them. And then I'm I'm just telling you, Lock Haven, we can go check the records. I'm just I'm putting it out there, Big Jim. You're right. We want some uh, we want some team team season titles in there between. But so no, you no guys tournament. okay. You did win yep. multiple dual titles. That's actually correct. Yep. Um, and awesome. there were a couple of years that you guys actually beat Mizzou before they came into the MAC. I remember you beat them at the Virginia the year before dual. Before they came in the MAC, we beat them. We beat them at the Virginia dual finals. That's the year before right. they got in the MAC. That's crazy. And then they they yeah. dominated your conference. They have since left, and they joined the Big Twelve. They had an NCAA champion last year, um, but coach. The big thing I want people to, to get to know about Kent State wrestling, you know, you and I, you and I <laughs> will periodically go off and get in arguments like that. I like that about it. It's real. Oh, it's real. Trust me. Uh, but I want people to know about your schedule, your budget, what you guys are working with for a roster, uh, what type of kids you guys are looking to recruit at Kent State. It's a division one school in Kent, Ohio. And I just don't know if a lot of people know about it. I contact you a lot. You and I text and call each other a lot, probably weekly. Um, monthly and weekly, right? Yeah, right. right. Yes. Yeah, right. Hundred percent. And what yes. what have you been doing the last two or three times I've called you? You've been you've been hanging out with who? You're always doing it. It's the name of the game in, in Division One wrestling. You always got to bring in new new people, and you're doing what? Oh, recruiting, just recruiting, having recruits on campus. Yes. Always recruiting. Oh, yep, yep. Always recruiting. So, Ian. At App State, Ian Miller, one of your former wrestlers, my nephew. Um, he, same thing. Every time I hit the, him up for something, there's always recruits in time in, in town in Boone, North Carolina. Same yeah. thing with you. You always have recruits in town yep. in Kent, Ohio, and that's like the name of the game in the mid majors. Would you agree with that? Yes. We last year we probably had 50 kids on campus and spent the night. We had a wow. huge recruiting class. Um, we got all our scholarship back for this upcoming year. Um, so last, you know, we, we lost it a few years back under the old AD. Uh, that guy's no longer with us. They hired a new guy in. Um, I can get into how all that went down, but he ended up giving us our scholarship back. 
last year. So we, we ended up going out and we, we have a class of 20 guys. Um, I personally believe it's the most talented class that I've brought in since the Dustin Kilgore, Nick Bellian, um, Brendan Barlow, uh, Keith Witt class that we had. 2000 class of 2007 2008 i believe is what yeah, that class yep, is that sounds about right yep okay yep. so when we talk about this you talk about your scholarships were cut i yes. think a lot of athletic programs during the covid pandemic cut back on a lot of different budget things there was uh furloughed employees there was all this different stuff that went down um in across the united states division all divisions of athletics uh naia juco Obviously, NCA Division One, Two, Three. You guys are Division One. How many scholarships did you have? What did you go down to, and what are you back up to? When when it happened to us, we went from nine point nine scholarships to essentially it was like five point three. It was more of a dollar mark than it was um, scholarships. But at the end of the day was right around. We we ended up going from nine point nine to five. Um, I was told on June like the twentieth, and if you know anything about Division One athletics. You have to let kids know what their scholarship is going to be for the following year by July 1st. So everybody that was coming back, we had to notify them what their scholarship was going to be. So I literally had 9.9 .9 scholarships out. Um, we were told that we had to get it down to 5.3. Um, I had about 10 days to do it. I essentially had my boss get on the, a Zoom meeting because back then everything was Zoom meetings. The entire team was out there on there. We had a, a parent on there. And then we told them individually that, you know, we've been cut and we've been cut almost in half. And that means all our scholarships have to go into half. And, you know, we'll meet with you individually and talk to you and tell you what your new scholarship is going to be. Um, essentially, the way it worked out was that we, we I, I notified every single kid that your scholarship essentially is getting cut in half. From there, we had a few kids that uh, couldn't come back because they couldn't afford it. I then used their money to kind of make sure the guys that, you know, at that point, it was the Jake Ferry, the Cody Kamara. Andrew McNally kind of got them back up to where they were comfortable um, where they could, they can manage it. And then uh, we just kind of went from there um, for two years, essentially. That's obviously something that's super tough because you guys are at a disadvantage to all the big 10 schools, the big 12 schools, and even some of the PAC schools that have obviously larger budgets. Yep. Um, I would say the SOCON is pretty on par with the mid-American conference as far as budgets and scholarships, most of them at least. Uh, when you're, when you're at a disadvantage and you, know, obviously we know the division one athletic, uh, playing field is not super level, right? It, you really can't miss on a kid at Kent state, you know, like you really are invested in a Nick Bedley on a Brendan Barlow, a, a Dustin Kilgore, a Mike, De, Mikey De Palmas. He came in as a transfer, a Jake Ferry. Um, you, you are really invested in those guys. Why do you guys have to be so much more invested then let's say a big 10 school is in an athlete. Well, I just think big 10 guys, they, they get, they get some guys cheaper. Um, I'm not say some guys, some guys just want to be at that type of school and they'll go there for less. I mean, you have, uh, I, I've done some things on your shows before. Where I've kind of called people out for, for going to big 10 schools for on such little money when they could actually go to a team like us or central Michigan or Ohio university and start right away and not have to sit the bench for a few years before they get on the team and, and essentially get more scholarships. We, we've had many conversations like that. So kids will go to other schools for less and part of it's the experience and part of them, you know, hell, I grew up in Ohio. I'm not, I'm not blind to Ohio state and, and what their Saturday days are like with big time football and, and big time basketball essentially. So I get it. Um, but you know, some kids will go there cheaper than they go to a Kent or maybe they just, they want to have a better, they, they think it's a better experience. So they want to have that experience compared to a Kent. That's what it is, you know, with us, if you really look at where we're at recruiting the, the years we had no money because we were cut, we have some gaps in there. You know, you, you know, usually we're bringing in eight to 12 guys a year. We didn't have, we had two years, we didn't bring in many, many guys. And then this next year, we've got uh, 20 kids in. So we've got some gaps in our team. We got to make sure these 20 guys get going. And like you said, hopefully we didn't miss on any of the 20 guys we, we did get in. And uh, we've got a lot of older kids that are going to start for us this year. I think we'll have probably eight returners, eight seniors. I'm wrestling in our lineup and then we got to make sure these young guys that we have are ready to go, go next year, ultimately. So Jim, how did it work with eligibility years? Obviously the 2020 graduating class really got, in my opinion, they got a really bad verdict. In my opinion, they, they did not get an extended year. They got 95% of their season, but they didn't get the most important part in many people's eyes, which is the NCAA tournament, right? 
and you guys had some guys on 2020 that you you know they, they didn't get to wrestle out the the NCAA tournament and it was in Minnesota it was in a football arena it was going to be uh, I think you know as uh, as changing in the sport as uh, Madison Square Garden was right in 2016 because you're in a football arena it's totally different right it's it's a different feel I, I was just I know you and I were very excited along with everybody else in Division One wrestling but how did that work with the kids who then the class of 2021 got extra years. Yeah. And now you got to manage those guys. Like Andrew McNally got an extra year, right? Yeah. And he didn't take his extra year with you. He took it with Wisconsin. But how did you yeah. manage the extra year and keeping guys around for extra year? Did they let you, what was there different rules that changed for that extra year? We didn't have, we, we, Tim Rooney was the only, it would have been Tim Rooney would have been my only extra guy because at that point, well, he, he lost it. So he was done. You know, and if, if Tim Rooney would have got his year back because he didn't wrestle in the national tournament, is, is, it would have been his fifth year. Even if he would have got his year back, I don't think he would have done it. He was ready to go on to medical school. And, and you know, he, 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 I think he was done with wrestling at that point. But essentially, he was really the only guy that didn't really get to compete. McNally came back the following year for us. Um, he's one of the guys that I had to manage his money. And I had to, you know, when other kids weren't making, when other kids decided they, they weren't going to come back because they couldn't afford for half the amount I was giving someone like McNally more money to, to keep him around. Um, essentially, you know, we, we, I don't know if we all know the story, but McNally wrestled for us at the national tournament the year after COVID, the year when there weren't really any fans there. Um, he made to the round to be All-American. He, it was tie score with four seconds left. He locked hands, ended up losing on a, I think it was like seven to six on a locked hands call. Um, following year, we, we also lost a coach. So we lost a, a, the big guy coach and we lost our scholarships you know, during the like pre COVID years. So, you know, he came back and he felt that we didn't have the workout partners. He felt that we didn't have the coach for him. So he ended up going to Wisconsin. Um, I, I, at one point I thought he was just looking around when he came and said he wanted to transfer. I didn't realize that his mind was already made up. And there were some things that I told him and some things I expressed to him going into it. Like, for example, he came out, I want to say is like the AC seed from the Mac, right? If I remember correctly, it was the AC. I believe so. Yeah. Maybe in the ninth, six seed. Yeah, I don't know. I think it was it was in top eight because if he would have won, he would have placed right around where a seed was. That's how I okay. kind of managed it. But gotcha. Uh, um, you know, and I, I sat down and talked. I go, Andrew, you're going to go to you know, you want to go to one of these big programs. You're going to go there, and you you could go to the Big Ten. I, I mean, this is before I knew he was going to Wisconsin. I go, you go to the Big Ten, and they're all, almost the the entire starters from the Big Ten were all coming back. So I want to say there were like seven of the eight guys at his weight weight class were returning Hall Americans. I go. You go there and, you know, you have a typical McNally year and you're going to lose and maybe a big 10 guy you weren't supposed to, you might beat one, but you're not going to be the, the, the sixth or seventh AC coming out, taking an eighth place at the, at the big 10. I go, hell, you probably got a place in the top three to get a top eight place. I would think I, I go, you really need to strongly think about that. You come to Kent, you wrestle in our conference. I said, I think that ultimately you come, you know, you, you, you do our schedule, which we're always a competitive schedule. You do well, hopefully you can do really well at, at Vegas keep your ranking up, kind of walk your way through the, the Mac conference, which I don't think he's had a close match. Well, besides the Missouri guy, he never really had close matches. And, you know, he took second, he, second, second, first for us. Um, and he, and he's lost to two uh, Missouri guys and he beat a Missouri guy in the finals of the last year. I go, you'll come and Missouri was gone. We knew that. I go, you'll come, you can have a, a great season and you'll end up a, a top eight seed and give yourself a chance to a better chance to, to be an all American. I go, you go to a big 10 school. It's going to be a totally different thing. And, ultimately decided to go to Wisconsin um, and some things didn't fall for him the right way as far as COVID and having to sit out a few different times and not getting to wrestle, you know, because they still, the COVID was still in, in play and he ended up losing a lot of his rankings and ultimately didn't even make the, the national tournament. So I still think that if he would have came to Kent, he would have put himself in a better situation to have, to, to, ha to have a chance to become an all American like he wanted than going to a school like that. But that's a whole other story. Um, but we met, we just managed it as far as just making sure that we, uh, we, we kept as many guys around as we could. Um, with that said, we, we had some transfers that came in that we were able to like late minute transfers after we got some money back that we, uh, that we ended up getting. Um, so at the end of the day, we ended up getting some guys, but we still weren't at full strength with our scholarships that happened this year. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's worked so far, knock on wood, we've come back really strong. Um, I think I, I really like our recruiting class. We ended up keeping two guys around I actually kept three guys around, but two that are on six year guys. That's Jake Ferry and Cody Kamar, who's a two time national qualifier. Jake's a one time national qualifier. And then our heavyweight 
Um, we, we just, we kind of talked him into going to grad school. He's a teacher and you need, you need to get a, a master's anyway to, to make more in Ohio. So he stuck around um, a few other guys that we, you know, we got to stick around. So we're going to have a lot of returning, returning um, starters on our team, which I think is good. So you got a returning mid American conference champion and Cody Kamara yep. at 149 pounds. He had a, uh, he pinned Marcus Robinson of Cleveland state in the finals last year. Um, he's back as a six year guy. He got another two time qualifier in Ferry. New England kid, he's back. Yep. Uh, and then, so who have your MAC champions all been in the expanded MAC? You've had McNally, you've Rooney. had Rooney, and you've had Kamara, correct? Kamara, that's correct. It's, it's really hard to win the MAC now. Well, I, I as think an individual. Last, last year you saw a little more. Um, more teams have champs than than we've had the years before that because Missouri was in it and they were having you know four or five champs pretty regularly. Even I, I, if I'm correct, it was here they had six or seven champs. So. You know, now that they're gone, I think it opens up some things. I think that last year was a perfect example of how the next three or four MAC tournaments could be because Lockhaven essentially came out of nowhere. I think you know we all went into it with the Central being the favorite. Um, I think after them, I, I thought that OU might have been the, the the next best team. Um, and like I said, I don't, I don't even remember who. I, well, Central took second. I don't know who was third. Buffalo was in the top four. I think. I think we were fifth or maybe sixth somewhere in that range. But. Uh, um, yeah, I, I think that the way this term is, it's, it's whoever's going to get hot at the end of the year. I think some seating has has some things to do with, you know, where you're going to be seated and who you wrestle during the year. So there's a lot of components that are going to kind of affect who, who the champion is going to be in the MAC term. But I don't think it's hands down one team or another this year. I think maybe Buffalo might be the favorite just from, you know, knowing what I know coming back, say so many guys coming back as well. But uh, we'll see. Like I said, it, it'll be it'll be a very interesting year. So you guys start this year out to move on to the schedule, Coach Andersey. I, I, I got a, t- a ton more a- uh, Andrew McNally questions, but I got to move on to the schedule yep. because I just want to, you know, I'll come back and circle back around to that if we have time with Andrew McNally. But uh, the schedule, you guys start the year at Clarion. That's where you've been starting the year for a pretty long time because that's the first date in November, correct? That is correct. It's the first weekend you're allowed to compete. We go to Clarion, it's cheap. We can go in and out essentially. So we can go there, wrestle, come back. Doesn't cost us a lot. It's even better now that we have that in our schedule with the new rule. Um, we can take everybody on our team, can go to the, and we can pay for everybody. So new rule this year, freshmen get five competitions and don't lose their red shirt year. So we can have- Oh, wow. Yeah. So we have all those young guys on our team. We have guys that we know that are going to be a starting lineup next year that are freshmen. We can take them to- up to five events. And, you know, since Clarion's on our, on our schedule, we're taking our entire team to, to Clarion. We're going to pay for everybody. We're going to hop in a, in, a, in a bus, wrestle the day, come back, whole team will be there. In the past, that's been on some of the kids to do. And whenever they're, they have to wrestle unattached, they got to pay. Now you can take, there's five dates where you can pay for kids to go. Now you're going to get a lot more. You're going to get 20 matches out of a lot more guys than you wouldn't have got 20 matches out of. Would you agree with that? I that's no, not necessarily that because you're not allowed to write. If you're a freshman, you're not allowed to wrestle in any open tournaments or any open events until after the first semester. And then you have to have a specific grade. So wow. they only want freshmen traveling with the team and, and, or you can't compete. So wow. That's new rule. Yeah. That's changed things. Cause yep. in the past they could get a lot of matches. Like I think of Dustin Kilgore in his red shirt year, got a lot of matches. Yeah, I know yeah. Ian got a lot of matches in the red shirt year. I know that those guys got a lot of matches in the red shirt year. Anytime you red shirted guys, they were going all around getting a lot of matches. We, we have a guy named um, um, Aaron Ferguson from uh, Steubenville. He had 30, he won 30 matches last year for us as a red shirt. Wow. Um, he'll be our starting 50, 157 pounder, but he won't have, he, those guys won't have that unless you take them to your first three events, which we may do. It just depends on how everything falls. I know clearing we're all going to. Um, the next uh, date after that is the Appy State Tournament. Now, here's another good thing. In the past, and, and I, I actually uh, text John, um, John or Mark, John Mark, right? I text him. I didn't, I didn't uh, text your, your nephew. I should do that next. But they have, uh, we go to the Appy State Invitational. They also have a uh, open, open the next day. Now, well, last year was the same day. If it's the next was day, it? that changes it. But if it's the, if the open's the same day, they can still travel all with us. We can pay for them because the way the rules are set, that only counts as one point. That would be their one point. We can see all our freshmen two weeks in a row, which I'm hoping that's the case because, you know, anytime you get to see your freshmen and 
along with the other guys. It helps in so many ways, just as far as they get to watch the guys actually do it that are competing. Um, so there's some definite advantages that, to be able to travel now and get the experience without using a red shirt. So the first two dates are going to be Clarion, then App State Open yep. or App State Invite, Mountaineer Invitational, I believe it's called. Yep. Where do you guys go then in the first semester for them? Are there any duels? Are, is there Vegas? Where? Did, what's the big tournament in the first semester for you guys? Well, we, we go to Naval Academy, which I think is it's a great tournament. We've gone to, to Naval since I've been the head coach. I love it. I love going there. You get, you get to see a lot of the East Coast teams that you don't necessarily see during the year. And then the week after that was Thanksgiving. We come back and we, we don't do anything over Thanksgiving. Um, I believe that's just a good time to be with your family. It's that first point to take a look back and kind of reflect on your first three weeks and even our conditioning, just where you're at in, in, in the year. And then we go to Vegas, um, followed by Vegas is Ohio State at Ohio State. Oh, you're at Ohio State. Is there anybody else in that with Ohio State? Is it just, just, us, you guys? In, just us in Ohio State. Yep. They, so you uh, get to wrestle in the Cavalli on the, for the first time on the stage, yeah? If they do that, I, you know, I, I know last, last time we wrestled there, it was at uh, – um, St. John's. St. John's. Now, I heard they wrestle in the new, new facility now, right? That's what I'm saying. That's the Cavalli. Oh, the Cavalli, yes, yes, yes. The Cavalli is attached, and that's, that's their new facility. Yep. It's they share it with volleyball and it's, yes. it's incredible. I've heard nothing but really great things about that. Everybody's right on top of the mat. It's loud. Probably, you know, probably a lot of like more now. Yeah, it's just, but it's bigger. Bigger. Yep. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. What Ohio State does. I, I I love that you guys have a duel. Uh, Vegas. Where are you guys in December? What's going on? Where are you guys going to be? Scuffle, Vegas, Midlands. What's your what's your big tournament in the so first? We're, go, we're going to Vegas, and then we wrestle Ohio State, and then uh, we come back at the very end of December. We're wrestling Northern and, and uh, Edinburgh at home. Um, to kind so of Northern end. Illinois and Edinburgh in a in a tri meet in the Mid American no, Conference. No, we're wrestling Edinburgh on uh, I think it, or Northern Illinois on a Sunday. I think it's the nineteenth of uh, December, and we come back and wrestle Edinburgh. You know, we're gonna have a big event. It's gonna be we're gonna have mat side seating, um, dinner, cash bar, all that stuff right next to the. The mat, that would be December 23rd. We're going to try, it's a little bit in the afternoon-ish time. Try to get as many people. It's a Friday, hoping maybe they don't have to work the Friday before Christmas or that they can squeeze out early. We're going to, and to it's, it's to, to be announced, but for all you, uh, I guess I can do it now. For all you uh, um, alumni, we're trying to get Coach Gray back. We're going to try to honor Coach Gray and, and you know, call it Coach Gray Day. Anybody that had wrestled for Kent State University under me, Coach Gray, can come back and they'll be announced during the match. They'll be be able to stand up and the crowd will be able to applaud them for, for wrestling at some point, at some point at Kent State, either under myself, Coach Romano, or Coach Gray. That sounds like an event I might have to Uber home from. I'm not <laughs> going to lie to you, Big Jim. Sounds like, sounds, like, sounds like a great event, Coach Andersy. I like that. Uh, second semester, where do you guys come out uh, of the gate going second semester? We're doing something different because of this rule also is, you know, usually you your red shirts, you kind of – during the break, it's, it's hard for them a lot of times, but we're making all our freshmen come back. We're going to figure out how to house them. And uh, we're going to go, we're going to the Franklin Marshall tournament. Um, just a tournament. It's, it's, pro, it's the week prior to uh, um, Virginia duels. So we're sending everyone to that, you know, maybe some of our guys that are ranked or guys that don't need matches, we won't send there, but the goal is to send every freshman there. That's going to be one of their five matches they get on that week. Um, just to keep them going and keep them training during the, during the over break. What? That's followed by Virginia Duels right after that. Okay, Virginia Duels, always a great field. I love that event. I wrestled in that event. That was a good time. Uh, we wrestled Mizzou at that event, Hofstra at that event, always just a oh, Wisconsin. Really, really good event. The, the Virginia Duels, is, I, I love the format to it. I like it. They changed it a little bit, right, because now – you make the semis, you go for third and fourth if you lose in the semis and then the right isn't it something like that now. They aren't even doing that. The last two years, because you know, the Big Ten has that different schedule now and they, they wrestle that weekend, so they don't they have a hard time getting Big Ten schools. Um, right now we're just wrestling three duels. And I I, I don't know, I know Ohio University's there, I know Oklahoma's there, I know Campbell's there, um, I know uh um Maryland's there, so I know we're gonna wrestle Maryland. We're I think we're wrestling. The, the four other teams or the three other teams besides OU, be, besides Oklahoma. So it'd be Campbell, Maryland. And I don't know, I can't think of who the last school is, but I know we got Maryland and uh, um, Campbell on our schedule. That's good. Those are good duels. Those are tough schools. I like that. Yep. That's good for you guys. Uh, where do you guys go after that? Is it the Mac uh, dual conference kind we of the heart of the it? Mac and literally from there on, it's all Mac teams. Um, I know that we have uh, Clarion and, and SIE at home, SIU, 
the clearing is going to be uh, Beauty and the Beast, which is always a big event. Um, we've sold out the last few times we've had it. And we haven't had it because of COVID. Put a wrestling mat down, put a gymnastics floor down on the gym, and we go at the same time. So it's kind of like two events. We, we do a lot of things with the city. We get a lot of young kids in there. We get the, the beauty. We get the beast dressed up, and they sign autographs. We try to make it more of a family thing. It's on a Sunday, um, so it, it's going to be a, a pretty big event. And like I said, we always look forward to having that. Ohio University grudge match. It's that their place this year, correct? That, that their place. We need another trophy made. I've been getting harassed that the someone lost the trophy. It was COVID. I really don't know how. You know, we we won we won it years back and we brought it home, and we were supposed to give it up. Someone actually, one of the guys that didn't make it on the program, took it with them to wherever they went. They so it's tra gone, somebody but. transferred out with the the grudge match trophy transferred out with one of your former student athletes is that what you're saying or burned down with whatever else they burnt but yes it's uh, it's no longer at kent state university and took a lot of gripe from that but uh hopefully you can get another one made didn't you get it made uh I, right now we're trying to get it made uh but joel actually just texted me the other day they might be making one so i think there's going to be a new traveling grudge match trophy that's going to be made down in athens so i don't know if we beat them to it we'll make it because scott blank does a great job at riverside where i work um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. He has a design. He's got to send it to me out. We'll talk about it next show because I'll get that from him. But, uh, where will the mid American conference tournament be held this year? Coach Anderson, George Mason. So, so it's going to be in Northern Virginia. Yep. Yep. DC area. DC area. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be different because I know Ryder had it during COVID and, Our Ryder spent a lot of money, pumped a lot of resources in the, the, the facility. The facility was great to wrestle in. That was the, the year that there were no fans allowed anything. So it was great, but no one was there. I don't, I, we've never wrestled at George Mason since I've been a coach. So I don't know what their facilities are like. I don't know where we're going to wrestle, but it, it, it's a great area. So um, it'll be interesting to see how many people are able to travel. Um, last year, I thought OU was a great place. I personally believe that uh, if you look at where, where the Mac is, is, fielded we should try to find a centrally located place you know our, our conference headquarters in cleveland i think that cleveland would kill it every year um you, you know that's one option right now we're going back and forth to, to places so technically we're going, george mason will be at our place the next year we're getting our mac center renovated so we're i'm trying to personally push that one year ahead or one year later so our uh, facility will be completed because having in our facility while renovations going on, could be a little bit uh, hairy. Could be okay. really hairy. So it, the the NCAA tournament will then be in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yep. I believe it's the same place, the same arena where they hold the Big Twelve tournament. Okay. So that's going to be a little different because the last time it was in Oklahoma was 2014. Oklahoma's a little different travel for you guys, but obviously you're looking to take, you know. Obviously, more than half the team, that's the goal uh, with yep. you guys. But big thing I want to talk to you about before we talk about the Kent State golf outing and what you guys do for fundraising, but the MAC did not have an All-American last year. That's correct. How do you guys change that this year? Well, you know, I, I think talking, it's going to be interesting to see how many kids are coming back from the bigger programs. You know, there were a lot, last year there were a lot of six-year guys or guys getting an extra year, so they were older, guys transferring because they had it, so there were – it seemed like there were so many better kids that stuck around at, at programs that normally wouldn't be there. So, okay. You know, so last year, I just a disclaimer to people who don't know last year was arguably the toughest NCAA tournament ever, ever in history, ever because yes, of I what agree. you just explained. You had, we had a guy an Olympian who just took third in the world who did an all American and Stevan Michich. He's an Olympian. The guy just yep. took third in the world and he was down a weight. I understand it was up a weight wrestling. But Stevan Michich is incredible. He did not, he got, he didn't all American last year. That was an extremely yep. tough tournament to your point. It was the toughest NCAA tournament. I mean, we could sit here and go round and round about it, but like arguably the toughest NCAA tournament ever. Yes. And you know, it technically could be again this year because kids still have six years. We got two guys coming back. Yeah, so no, you're right. You're right. It's going, it's only going to get tougher. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how many kids are coming back and, and like I said, we've got about a three to four year period where it could be the toughest because guys are guys got another year within a program. And, you know, with wrestling, sometimes it's real hard because you got to look at a guy like McNally who took his six year. He didn't do very well. You know, it, 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 he's too old. It's, the, the college 
the, co- the way we train for college is so much different than we train for other things that it's, it's tough on a, especially schools like us, because we wrestle so many matches to try to earn spots and, and then try to get your ranking up. So you wrestle a lot of matches during the year. We wrestle a lot more than the Ohio state kids, the Penn state kids, the Iowa guys, because we're trying to either upset guys. Or we're trying to prove that we're, we're any good and we should be ranked so we can get to the national tournament. That's still going to be going on. There's still going to be a lot more people around because kids are still on their sixth year. I would say this coming year and next year will still be very similar as it was last year. Um, we just have to do better. I, you know, I think that as coaches, we bitch and complain all the time. Matt coaches, the, the system's broken. This is broken. But we, we, as a conference, we weren't that good last year. Um, you know, we got to do better. As coaches, we got to do better. As, as athletes, we have to do better. Um, and like, like I mentioned, maybe some kids will graduate and make it a little bit easier for us. But it's a combination of things, I think. You guys, you know, do a really good job. You, you know, you've wrestled Penn State in the past, and that's actually like a fundraiser for you guys when you go. It's almost like when Kent State's going to be rest, or, uh, playing Georgia in football this year, and they, they make over a million dollars when they go to a lot of those games. Yeah. Or we've played Alabama in the past for Kent State football. Kent State football's playing Georgia this week. They're I'm playing gonna... Georgia this week, but I'm saying we've played Alabama because they're, uh, Alabama's head coach is a Kent State Golden Flash. Yep. Nick Saban's a Kent Stater. He played on Kent State's football team. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, he played football there. He was a coach there. Um, but it's wild because that's another thing you guys did for fundraising. Like they pay you guys to come into those, to those arenas. And it's almost like fundraising to you. You guys are always fundraising, you know, obviously Ian's at app state. So I get to hear, you know, they're always doing fundraising, silent auction, golf outings. You guys just had a golf outing. How was the golf outing and how good is it to see guys you wrestled with and to bring alumni back into Kent, Ohio? Well, the, the original goal for an, a golf outing isn't to, isn't to make money. It's, it's to get people back on campus to have a good time. It's, a, it's an all-day event. We had 92 golfers. Originally, we had 98. Um, the last minute, we had to force them back out because something happened with one of them, and they were coming a little bit further. Um, we had two other guys back out. So, we, you know, but still 92 people at a golf outing is great. You know, you make probably about $40 a head after you, after you pay all the bills and everything, and we do a really good job of giving out awards. We give everyone a prize for coming. They get lunch, they get breakfast, they get dinner, and they're all really good meals. And then at the end, we do like a, a raffle where you just get raffle off prizes that we bring in. And, and uh, if you know anyone that comes to our golf outings, they love the prize at the end. We try to make it so if there's 90 people there, 90 people are going home with something along with the prize we give them. So uh, it's hold a- on, unless it's me and I win all the money. This win the money. You've won the 50-50 a few times. Yeah, what Correct. what what did your brother? What is your brother screaming in my ear? <laughs> give it back! They all chant and they and they all give it back. So, <laughs> so what so happened? This year, uh, what happened? This year, Jordan, Jordan Marrero won it. Oh, you gave the money back. They talk into giving the money back. Jordan Marrero got get yeah, our our, our fifty fifty was worth right around four hundred and some dollars. Um, everyone yelling, give it back, give it back. The golf outing cost one hundred twenty five. He goes, give me my one hundred twenty five. I'll be happy as ever. We gave the 125, the rest we gave back. So we made right around uh, $650 just off our 50 50 raffle. But all in all, you know, most of your money you get through your sponsors going to companies, them sponsoring the event, and us talking about the sponsors at the golf outing. And that's how we make the majority of the money because the rest of the money, like I said, you don't make a lot per person if you pay all your bills. But we bring in right around, I think we brought in between eight and nine thousand dollars. I haven't really got down to the, we're still waiting on a few. Uh, um, fundraising checks to come in, but somewhere between eight, nine thousand dollars every year. I it's think I owe you for a whole sponsor, don't I? You're one of those guys, yeah. So, um, it, it, you know, it's it it, it kind of runs itself at this point because a lot of people come back. I've got about four groups that have been at all 20 golf outings, and I try to always recognize them because every year, if they'd be 19, because one year we didn't have it, but they, they've been to every single one. Um, they're an older group. They came this year. They actually won it because they're so old. They get to hit from the the closer tees, and they've been playing golf forever. <laughs> They've never even come close to one and when initially they won the event. So it was good to see them win after they all hit that age that they get hit from the, the, the shorter, shorter tees. Coach, I love coming to the Kent State golf outing, but you know, I'm a dad now. Yep, so there was hard. a big uh, travel baseball uh, eight, seven U meeting that I couldn't miss. Uh, I had, I had to be there to uh, lend moral support. And my wife, she does a great job of obviously letting me travel and do events and, you, you were there for probably the first 15 and then you had kids. That's the way it is. You get, you get yeah. kids that graduate. They all come back. They get married. They have kids. You don't see them for seven, eight years. They come back. Um, Alex Camargo is a perfect example. He wasn't. Camargo, he had, my guy. I love Alex Camargo. Camargo I hadn't been along. Then, you know, I asked him what he's doing. He's like, I'm working and taking care of my kids, but 
you know, the kids are a little bit older now, so he's back. And that's usually what happens. You see about yeah. a, a great ten- guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. Ten Took my starting time. spot for me as a senior. He did. He did. He beat, up he did. He beat me out. Yeah. I love Alex Camargo, though. You know what I mean? He's a great guy. Hey, speaking of 2002, 2003, what do you think of that guy? Keeping that going. Keeping it yeah, going. Yeah, and, and if you look at the backpack back there, it's pretty gnarly and stained and gross. Yeah. So I need a new backpack here. All right. We'll get you a backpack, and we're going to work on getting that singlet frame for you. We, we oh, yeah. That. There's there's my singlet, too. There's there's the Z the Miller singlet. Frame. Yep, we'll get that frame for you and get it all out to you. I love it, Big Jim. And then we can have an even cooler background of the podcast for the uh, Kent State Wrestling Talk. Episode one looks like it's in the books, Coach. We're almost out of time. Do you got anything else for me? No, just uh, like I said, if you get to listen to this and you have um, emails or questions that you want me and you to talk about or things that are interested that we don't bring up, me and you sometimes go off on stories that uh, we don't know if people are interested or not, but feel free to email me, J-A-N-D-R-A-S-S at K-E-N-T dot E-D-U. Email any questions you have. Um, We're going to get this out. If you're not getting it and you want to get on the mailing list, email me or have someone email me, hey, so-and-so wants on. But we're going to try to get this out um, by the end of this week through Kent State University. They'll be sending it and uh, you'll get to listen to it, make fun of me and you, what we look like. And hopefully we'll get some other, some of the teammates, uh, some, some of the guys in the team on a few of these episodes. So you don't yeah, look at it, us anymore. It won't be you every time. Hey, it's the office number 330-672. Give me the last four. 8423. 8423. Do you need to call and leave Jim a mean message or a question? 330-672-8423. You got it. All right, coach. Thank you for the time. Stick around. I appreciate you and go flashes. Season one, episode one in the, in, in the books. Thanks, Zeb.